congratulations everyone on Together Together. It's a very charming movie. Nicole, my first question for you is, um, you're one of the lucky filmmakers to come into the festival having a movie that already sold to a distributor. So does that take a little bit of the pressure off and does that make for a, a more relaxed, enjoyable kind of festival experience? Yeah, for sure. It's like, oh, <laughs> like now we're just, now we're just celebrating the movie and like putting it out in the world. Um, so it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely more chill. Though I imagine like with the remoteness of the festival, it's like, it's all just a little more chill. We're all on our couches and like in our tropical nether worlds. So it's, it's like. So this movie kind of flips the script on how we normally see surrogacy portrayed in film and TV. We're here, it's actually the man who's pursuing it and the woman who is not, you know, actually even interested in the baby at first. Um, so, you know, what appealed to you about that approach and what were sort of the origins of the, the idea of the project? Well, yeah, I think that like a lot of surrogacy movies, it's like kind of like dour, sad, ominous thing of like, I can't believe I have to give up this baby. Um, and I think that's also really connected to like the way we view women as like women are meant to be mothers and like, deeply identify with that all the time and and um and that we don't talk about like a male biological clock ever but like it exists like men want to be dads so um I just wanted to tell a kind of like positive story that, that kind of divorces us from this idea of like the all-encompassing female biological clock and um leans more into like the the nuance of that and I have a question for you now, which is that you've played a lot of kind of over the top ridiculous characters, but Matt is a bit more of like a somber dude. Um, what was exciting to you about the chance to kind of slow down and play something a bit more dramatic and maybe interior? I think you kind of answered the question in your question, uh, which is to say that all of those things you just said, uh, that it's, it's a little bit of a slowed down character than I think what people associate me with um, by default. And uh, I'm just at a point, for a long time, all I wanted to do was big, ridiculous comedy. It's, what, it's why I got into show business. It's what I was so passionate about for so long. I've been so lucky to, to do that at a high level for, for quite a while. And I'm finding just this very organic urge to spread my wings a little bit and do something different. And um, and I'm really feeling open-minded about a lot of things I'm reading and, and different things I'm approaching, uh, working with different people who have different kind of tones and energies. And I just, I'm, it's a really fun exploratory time for me as, a, as an actor and, uh, and this movie landed in my lap um, and just kind of lit me up. It was, uh, it, it was full of hope and warmth and also an opportunity to um, tap into some parts of myself that, that I haven't put on screen very much. Did you find that it was challenging to take on a more dramatic role? Because you know, a lot of actors say that comedy is harder. So yeah. for someone like you who's done a lot of comedy, maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. I have a I have a comedy actor friend who's who describes comedy acting as uh, standing in the you know how batters in the warm up box will put weights on the end of their bat to prep for practice swings, and so they can step up to the plate and and take the weights off and have an easier swing that that's comedy acting is acting with weights on your bat and that dramatic acting is just just like swinging a bat it's no big deal uh i think anything you want to do really well and and really uh execute at a high level takes enormous concentration and focus and uh and and work um rehearsal contemplation meditation all these things that go into i think any great performance i mean jerry lewis there's maybe no broader comedian in history was was legendary for um, for doing tons and tons of takes, tons and tons of rehearsals of things. Charlie Chaplin, the same thing. And I think uh, so. So I think it's easy to to kind of put these assumptions on to the different styles. But I just think no matter what you're pursuing, any creative effort that you want to do at a high level, 
takes work, takes focus. Um, I had so much fun settling into this character. It's a quieter movie than I typically would do, but um, but there was something exciting and uh, I don't know, just there was something really got me charged up about how soft and simple the story and the character was. And so it, it weirdly, um, I think it had the same kind of energy that I, I, I bring to other things, but just it didn't, it looked different, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great answer. Um, Patty, I have a question for you, which is that um, your character kind of, at least at first, is this sort of blasé kind of disaffect to his woman. And you make, you make it look very easy, but um, given like the different emotional ups and downs that the character goes through, like I'm sure that it was harder than it looks. So what was maybe the most challenging aspect of this flip between comedy and drama that you have to do? Um, I would say the crying stuff. I would say that was the most uh, kind of, it was like, very, it was exhausting and it was also like, um, you, cause you have to stay, it's like, I didn't think about it. It's, you know, I've never had to do that on camera before, but like, it's not just like you make yourself cry or whatever. And then you, and then that's the take. It's like, you have to do it a bunch of times. Like you need a bunch of takes. And then there's like of their coverage, there's other angles. So it's just like, you're sitting in that space for an amount of time, uh, a longer amount of time than I kind of like, ever you know I never gave it any thought <laughs> because uh yeah I've just like pretty much only ever done like silly comedy stuff so that was a lot more um that required a lot more work than I like uh anticipated but it was like it it was wonderful in that like Nicole was there I think that was you know a huge part of it is like Nicole and Ed are both very like supportive and warm and like they always have like little Mona Lisa smiles on their face most of the time so it's like it's it's nice to have like uh that because I feel a, a source of the friction uh as like a comedian maybe for me doing that was like this dread of humiliation of like doing a bad job and then like you you're vulnerable and you put yourself out there and then you do like a terrible job and then everyone's just kind of like ooh about it uh <laughs> gail what is is that the, from the simpsons the ooh that guy mm -hmm. um <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah it, it was i think that was uh the biggest the crying you speak of was that a lot of your crying your own crying or is that movie magic uh that's movie magic that's that uh <laughs> tear stick i'm addicted to it i'm addicted to the tear <laughs> well stick. don't sell yourself short <laughs> I'm, I'm using it i'm gonna I'm use it like at some point in the interview too i'm gonna put on it and be like i never thought I get an opportunity. Um, <laughs> yeah, Patty uses a tear stick all the time, like when you're just hanging out with her, yeah. you're telling well, Patty her like, has, an emotional story. Patty has no real human emotions. Um, so it's important to use well, the deal. <laughs> you say that, you see, the thing is, is that's really frustrating about that is you say that as if that's not public knowledge, as if that's not something <laughs> that I like, don't proudly espouse as like one of my virtues is that I right. virtue or emotion. And the fact that you're saying it as if you're outing me, I think is kind of in its own way, a traumatic fair. violence. Fair, fair, totally mm -hmm. fair. But it, it was really, it was really exciting to mimic those emotions. This tear stick thing I have never heard of, but it sounds like a wonderful tool that I would love to have. I'm just going to tell you. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's menthol on this. On, it's like lipstick. It's like a tube of lipstick. And so it comes in two forms. I've had it blown into my eyes before, like as a vapor that just like, uh, it's like minty. It's menthol. So it's like, it smells minty and they just like put it underneath your eyes and the fumes like, rise up and they get in your eyes and they 
stimulate. It's a form of torture that you use so that <laughs> the actor is then also crying because they're being tortured. Yeah. And Nicole well, also, also stuffed me in a locker a couple times. <laughs> she knocked my books out of my hand and she stuffed me in a locker <laughs> and like lots of wedgies on set just to get me in the mind space of like evoking my own method acting of like yeah. my high school bullying. Yeah. yeah. Some I mean, this is, a, this is a trick that almost every actor uses and, uh, and it's, it's been a secret for, for uh, so long. But yeah, these little menthol dabs make you cry. But what's interesting, what my experience with them is that um, they, if you start to cry from just a physiological reaction to the vapor, that it also starts to trigger, like the, the physiology of crying triggers emotional responses too. And suddenly, it, suddenly you are like acting, but you are feeling these things. It's wild. It's really interesting. Yeah, I always thought like, you know, when you get that one sort of perfect droplet that like some ex some crew member just ran up to you and just to put the <laughs> tear on your eye and then ran out of the frame. That happens too. So. That, that, yeah. that yeah. Is an, that's another version, but. And now uh, we get to also digitize them. So all of the <laughs> tears in the movie are CGI. We had a huge CGI budget. So, and some of the smiles yeah. are also CGI. You just go in there and fix it up. Well, yeah, it's like what? Stan Winston school. It's like the people who did like Alien and stuff.